I'm Jonathan Tomkin from the University of Illinois. From the reading, we know that in 1900, life expectancy at birth was 47 years in the United States, and between 45 and 50 years in Europe, Japan, and Australia. This changed quickly over the course of the century. Uh, US life expectancy at birth shot up to 68 years by 1950, and is now 77 years in 2000. This increase has been due to many factors. Uh, increased sanitation, better standards of living, better medical care. Uh, note the standard of care available in this 19th century painting, um, which would be very different from what we'd experience in a modern hospital today. This increase in life expectancy, or we could equivalently say decrease in death rates, has produced population booms. But these increases have stopped in many countries around the world today. Indeed, some countries, such as Japan, and Germany, the red and blue arrows, are seeing death rates exceeding birth rates and so experiencing flat or declining populations. Other countries, such as Uganda and Nigeria, green and yellow lines, have rapid contemporary growth rates. Why is there a difference between these two sets of countries? One way to think about this is by using the concept of the demographic transition. Population numbers change when there is an imbalance between the death rate, that is, the number of deaths per person per year, and the birth rate, the number of births per person per year. Consider how birth and death rates today might be different from birth rates and death rates in the past. Here's a diagram of birth and death rates versus time. Just take a minute to think about uh, what sort of relationship we might expect um, maybe 200 or 300 years ago, between birth and death rates. You might say that they're fairly close to being in balance because populations weren't changing very quickly. Um, and indeed, you might also think that they might be different from today because the higher life expectancies that we experience today translates into lower death rates. That is, less people are dying per person per year than they were in the past. We're living longer. It's an equivalent statement. For most of human history, the population has been relatively stable in a given location. High birth rates are balanced with high death rates. Uh, they might fluctuate from year to year. You might have a good crop or a bad drought or a war or a disease or a little baby boom, but overall there hasn't been much change. And because there is a balance between these two forces, we see the population stay relatively stable. Life expectancies were lower than today, but on average more children were born and this kept the population rate stable. People had their children earlier and they had larger families. As living conditions improved, which first occurred around the start of the 17th century in Europe, the death rate plunged, probably due to factors such as sanitation, higher standards of living, and uh, belatedly medical care improved as well. The birth rate did not change at first. People were accustomed to having large families. So there's a mismatch in the second stage of the demographic transition between the number of people being born and the number of people who are dying. Uh, there's a big population increase, and I've marked that here. So if we think about this, we can see there are less people dying, but the same number of people being born, the population must go up. More children reach adulthood, and so we see a big bump in the uh, overall population of the countries. Eventually, birth rates decrease as families manage their size in the context of lower birth rates. You don't need to have so many children if most of your children are now reaching adulthood, whereas in the past, many of them would die as children. It's a little bit mysterious why this happens, because during this period, there was actually an increase in people's standards of living. Industrialization and urbanization, which have been suggested as causes for this drop in fertility, actually meant that people had more resources, more money, more ability to consume, and so they actually had the ability to have more children, not less. And so this is sometimes referred to as a paradox. And you should be aware that when I talk about future trends in population growth, we don't really understand why family sizes decrease to match the, the death rate. Um, but nevertheless, it's an observed phenomenon that's occurred in many countries. When this family size decreases, so in other words, the fertility rate goes down such that the birth rate now matches the death rate, we now see a new stable population. 
it is higher than before because we went through this demographic transition period where there were low death rates but um, consistently high birth rates and so the population is now at a higher level but it is no longer growing. This is what we've observed in a lot of countries around the world today, particularly the advanced countries, western countries and industrialised countries. So to recap, we have these four stages of transition. In the first stage we have high death rates and high birth rates and they are matched so that the population remains stable. In the second stage the death rate plunges as new technology, uh, improvements in standards of living, increased nutrition, medicine, sanitation and so on mean that more children reach adulthood and adults live longer. This leads to a big boom in the population because the family sizes stay the same, just as many children are born as before. And then there is a stage when the birth rate decreases and it comes down to match the new low death rate. And finally, in the final stage, stage four, we see a balance between these two. So we have a new higher population because we've gone through this population boom, but the population is no longer increasing. It appears that many developing countries are following this trajectory. So let's look at an historical example. This is the birth and death rates for the UK, the United Kingdom. Note that the birth death rate in the mid 18th century was around 35 per thousand people. So that meant that between 3 and 4 percent of all people died every year. After this, the death rate drops, reaching a low of around 12 per thousand in the mid 20th century. Note that the birth rate remained high. In fact, it wasn't until about 150 years after the death rate first started to drop um, that the birth rate followed that descent. By 1950, the two had converged once more. So there was a transition period of about 150 years where the population increased in the United Kingdom. The UK population increased for around 10 million in 1750, that's the start of stage two, to over 50 million by the end of stage three. Many developing countries are still in stage two and three, if indeed they will end up following the pattern observed in the United Kingdom. If it takes 150 years to move to stage four, then we might expect the pressure of population growth to be with us well into the 22nd century, as many developing countries have only started this transition. One thing that we know about the 20th century and now the 21st is that the pace of life appears faster than it did for earlier generations. And this is reflected in lots of things. It's reflected in technology, it's reflected in uh, the sorts of social groups, it's reflected in how quickly businesses turn over but it's also reflected in demography. It appears that the 20 and 21st centuries mean that the, the high pace of change mean that countries move through this demographic transition faster. Here looking at this graph, we can see that the Swedish birth rate was similar to the United Kingdom birth rate and then it took about 150 years for that demographic transition and so there was a, a long period in which there could be population growth in Sweden. And you can see that the demographic transition in Mexico really didn't start until uh, the early 20th century. But already, 50 years after it begun, the birth rate started a sharp decline. And so we might see that countries that are going through the demographic transition today, the vast majority of countries around the world, are actually going to experience a much faster demographic transition than the original European countries did. This would imply that there'll be a smaller population boom because there's a shorter period over which there is an imbalance between births and deaths. As a consequence of this demographic transition, most developed and advanced economies are not going to see very much population growth over the course of this coming century. This is the, looking backwards, this is the 20th century's record of population change and you can see that the world population has increased markedly over the 20th century. It's gone from just under 2 billion people to about 6 billion at the turn of the century and is now over 7 billion today. Most of this increase happened in developing countries because developed countries, the more developed countries, had already experienced a large part of that demographic transition. We can see here that the more developed countries population did increase from around a half a billion to just over 1 billion, but that's only a fraction of the total increase in the population over the, over the century. In the next set of slides, in the next lecture, We'll talk about what this means for the future. Is this curve going to continue or are we going to see that S-shaped growth curve that we discussed last week?
Produced by OCE Atlas Digital Media at the University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign.